Hello everyone. Welcome to Engineered Learnings. Engineered Learnings has been created as an effort to help and reach out to all the engineering students, aspirants and professionals out there with the basic understanding and the crux of the topics important for placements, vivas, semesters, competitive examinations and all types of interviews. So let's go to today's topic. Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. Today we are going to talk about counter current stripping. So uh, this is in continuation with our earlier video counter current absorption. So if you haven't watched counter current absorption yet, please do pause this video and immediately go to the description box where I have given the link to our previous video of counter current absorption. Go and watch that video, you will get a better understanding of the process, what is absorption, what is counter current absorption and then you are going to get a clearer idea of what is stripping, exactly the opposite of uh, absorption and how to graphically approach the problem because many questions have come time and again from counter current absorption and stripping particularly the graphical approach the minimum liquid flow rate uh, how to find that or the saturation uh, um, mold ratio or mold fraction all of that is going to be explained in today's video the concepts of the same are going to be exp uh, uh, explained so if you haven't watched the absorption counter current absorption video yet pause this immediately and go and watch the video Okay, I hope that you have already watched that video and thereafter you are coming in continuation to that uh, in counter current stripping. So let us understand the concept of counter current stripping. So just the opposite of absorption, what happens in absorption is a liquid stream and a gaseous stream flowing together in a counter current direction, uh, counter current to each other that is anti parallel to each other. A substance which is present in the gaseous stream gets transferred from the gaseous stream to the liquid stream. That is, the liquid stream absorbs the substance. Uh, uh, in in uh, our counter current absorption case, we have explained the scenario with air and NH3 coming and pure water coming from the opposite side and NH3 getting absorbed in water from the air phase. So, uh, from the gaseous phase moving to the liquid phase is NH3. This is absorption. And what is stripping? Just the opposite of it. That is, we have explained a scenario here where SO2 dissolved sulfur dioxide is coming with the water and we need to strip out that sulfur dioxide and uh, need to remove it from water. So what we do is we send a fresh air stream which contains pure air stream which contains no traces of sulfur dioxide and when it comes in contact uh, in a counter current direction it comes in contact with water plus SO2 containing a high uh, partial pressure of SO2 or a high mole fraction of SO2 it absorbs the SO2 from the liquid phase to the gaseous phase that is just the opposite of absorption that is stripped that is the air stream or the gaseous stream is stripping the substance the SO2 from the liquid state to the gaseous state and the entire operation is having anti-parallel in an anti-parallel direction that is the flows of water and air are counter current to each other. So as we can observe that pure air is going into the chamber and water plus SO2, SO2 being high in number here, high in quantity is coming from this direction and water plus SO2 is getting removed from here in a much lesser quantity. So SO2 here is much much lesser in quantity than in here and air plus SO2 is getting extracted because air has sucked some amount of SO2 in the process and no water gets transferred to air and no air gets transferred to water. This is the prime assumption of absorption or a stripping process to make things simpler. Now we have seen that we approach an absorption problem with mole ratios to get a constant slope and not with mole fractions. Why? You will have to refer to that video only. Today uh, we will go straight away to the equations of the same. That is working with mole ratio instead of mole fraction. That is why n plus 1 as you can see this is the mole ratio that is moles of SO2 by moles of air and similarly x also moles of SO2 by moles of water. So outlet is equal to inlet that is outlet SO2 is equal to inlet SO2. So outlet SO2 is nothing but g dash which is moles of air flowing per hour into moles of SO2 by moles of air which moles of air moles of it cancel so moles of SO2 flowing with the outlet stream so g dash y n plus 1 is the outlet SO2 in this chain this uh, stream plus l dash x0 is the outlet SO2 of this stream is equals to g dash y1 that is the inlet SO2 in this stream if it is pure y1 is equals to 0 and this is e corresponding to 0 SO2 and l dash xn that is the amount of SO2 that is coming in with water 
and L dash G dash these are constants because these does not contain SO2. These are pure flow rates of air and water irrespective of the constant of SO2. So we work with mole ratios and not with mole fractions. So when we do it, we get an operating line equation. This is my operating line equation similar to that of absorption if you have seen that video. And when we plot this in a graph, yn plus 1 minus yi by xn minus x0 is equals to L dash by G dash. When we plot this, we get something like this. This is the straight line. This yn plus 1 and xn is corresponding to this point that is at a higher concentration because xn and yn plus 1, these two corresponding points are at a much higher concentration than the corresponding y1 and x0. So x0 is having some value because not all of it is transferred in the gaseous phase. Some amount of SO2 is still surviving. And y1 I have considered it to be 0 in this case. y1 is equals to 0. If y1 is having some value, that is air is having some amount of SO2, this point will just shift here. That is it will have a y1, y1 and it will have a x0 here. But that is not the case here because we have considered it to be pure, so it is x0 in this state. So now we see that what is happening, we have understood that the slope of this uh, uh, line is nothing but yn uh, plus 1 minus y1 uh, by xn minus x0, which is nothing but l dash by g dash. So this is the slope of the curve and this is my equilibrium line as we have already explained in the absorption video yi is equals to kxi that is in mole fractions when we do it in mole ratios it will come a complex equation which is giving a kind of a linear equation like this. So uh, we are seeing that how will we identify it's a stripping operation very important how will we identify through the graph that it is a stripping operation. Firstly first and foremost you see in a stripping operation in a stripping operation y see this x is much much higher because it is coming from the liquid state so liquid state so2 is much higher then it comes to the interface so2 comes to the interface it decreases there is a driving force it decreases in concentration and it further decreases in the gaseous state so what happens is this y i this is x i this is x and this is y so what happens is y is greater is lesser than y i is and x i is lesser than x because it's flowing from the liquid state to the vapor state you are clearly understanding that the concentration of so2 here is high and the concentration of so2 here is low so the driving force is nothing but this the difference in the concentration levels this is the my driving force which is hence pulling the so2 from here to here, this is my driving force, this uh, gradient between the x and y and the interfacial concentration as we can see at the interface where the mass transfer is occurring is going to have something like this, it's always going to be xi is less than x and y is greater than, uh, y is lesser than yi, that is yi is greater than x. So this is the this is the condition for stripping and also it is only possible, only possible that is yi can be only greater than y when the operating line is below the equilibrium line and when we draw a slope of minus kg by kl from the operating line to the interfacial line we obtain xi and yi and we determine that x is greater than xi which is the case here satisfied and yi is greater than y which is the case here so this is also satisfied so it is only possible when the operating line is below the equilibrium line so operating line is below the equilibrium line then it is a stripping operation very very important when will you understand that it is a stripping operation that is, this equation should satisfy. This yi and xi equation should satisfy. That is, the SO2 flowing from the liquid stream to the gaseous stream and the operating line should be below the equilibrium line. Then only it will satisfy. Now coming to the questions that generally arrive from this section. After understanding the concept, we are going to arrive to the questions that generally come. As we have already discussed in the absorption video, that we need to find the saturation point beyond which no mass transfer can occur. 
Now supposedly this is my uh, operating line. This can max to max go till the equilibrium line cannot cross the equilibrium line. Otherwise absorption will start taking place. Whenever the operating line is above the equilibrium line, absorption starts taking place. That is reverse mass transfer will start taking place. That is SO2 will try to flow back to the water stream. The maximum it can have is just touch, just touch the equilibrium line. In that case, if we know the Xn value, that is the incoming SO2 uh, concentration or incoming SO2 mole fraction uh, or mole ratio with the incoming water stream and the exiting concentrations, we can find that the exiting concentration of the SO2 with the water stream and considering air to be pure air, we can find the maximum Y value that can exit. That is the if I am sending a certain stream of water with a certain concentration of SO2 that is known for that certain concentration when I send air, air can absorb a maximum quantity and can get saturated to a maximum SO2 level. So in this operation, since the operating line is not touching the equilibrium line, there is scope for improvement. So that Y is normal, nothing extraordinary, but whenever this operating line touches the equilibrium line, it reaches saturation. That is no further mass transfer can occur. That is the maximum Y max or Y sat value, saturation value in the gaseous stream. That is, if I send a liquid stream with supposedly 5 mole fraction, 5 mole fraction, and at that condition, this operating line touches the equilibrium line, and we get with the corresponding Xn, if we drag a point to the uh, equilibrium line, we get a Y set, a corresponding Y set, and the Y set is supposedly 3 mole fraction. So the maximum value of Y set is 3 mole fraction or 3 mole, 3 mole ratio. That is, it can have maximum 3 moles within itself for a corresponding 5 moles in the incoming stream. So for a corresponding Xn, we can find the maximum y value that is that can exit there is a maximum concentration of SO2 that can exit with the air stream given the particular height of the tower and how is this possible how is this possible and this is for infinite number of trays if you see so how is this possible you just increase the slope and meet the equilibrium line here i hope you are getting the point so what is happening is you know that the slope is yn plus 1 minus y1 by xn minus x0 is nothing but l dash by g dash. Now supposedly you will be given a problem where you will be told that pure air is coming in, pure air is coming in. So this is 0, y1 is 0 and you will be told that the incoming molar percentage is or molar uh, ratio or molar fraction is supposedly small xn. You can convert that to capital Xn by the using the formula capital Xn is equals to small xn by 1 minus small xn. So you know capital Xn, you know this. And you know that the exiting x0, the exiting concentration of SO2 is, will also be given. This is also known. So this known, this known, this is equals to 0 known, this is unknown. And supposedly you will be given the gaseous flow rate. Gaseous flow rate will be known gaseous flow rate will be known. From the gaseous flow rate you can find out how many moles of air is flowing just by multiplying it with the uh, mole fraction. So the gaseous flow rate will be known, your liquid flow rate will be unknown and yn plus 1 will be unknown. From this equation you cannot find both two unknowns one equation. Now from the equilibrium line we know that this can, in, we can increase the slope and touch the equilibrium line such that y n plus 1 becomes y sat and in that condition my l dash will become l dash max because the slope is increasing and the maximum slope possible will correspond to y sat value that is y saturation value so the equation will land up something like this y sat minus y1 which is 0 I'm writing it for the sake of writing it minus by x n minus x0 is equals to l dash max by g dash if L dash is given, then this can land up to, if L dash is known, then this will be G dash max, G dash min. Because if G dash decreases, the slope automatically increases. So you will be either told to find G dash min 
or L dash max or Y set. So how will you get Y set? Y set is nothing but comes from the equilibrium line itself that is Y set by 1 plus Y set is equals to K into X set by 1 plus X set comes from small yi is equals to uh, k into small xi where small yi is equals to capital yi by 1 plus capital yi so y set is plus y is by 1 plus y set is equals to k into sorry i've written the wrong equation this will be y set by 1 plus capital y set is equals to k into xn by 1 plus capital Xn because Y set is corresponding in the equilibrium line to Xn. So if we drag the Xn line graphically, if we touch it here, we get the Y set. Once we get the Y set, we put it in this equation, find out the L dash maximum or G dash minimum. These are the questions that are generally asked. So you understand the graphical approach. The operating line is always below the equilibrium line for a stripping operation. What is a stripping operation? How is it taking place? What is the maximum Y that is possible? That is Y saturation. How will you find that graphically? How will you find that numerically? If you know the equilibrium equation, how will you find that numerically? And finally, how will you find L dash max or Y sat or G dash mean with the other information that is, that is provided? So you understand the graphical approach and also the interfacial concentration approach that how will you correlate uh, the, uh, the actual y with the interfacial y. That is yi is always greater than y in case of stripping because we have explained this. That is this is the driving force. So there is always a gradient x greater than xi, yi greater than y. This is established. So that's all for today. We will come up with co-current absorption and co-current stripping in our subsequent videos. If you liked it, give it a like, give it a uh, big fat thumbs up, share our content, subscribe to our channel. Thank you.